So let's talk risk and protective factors. We know that someone who identifies a minority, whether it's an ethno-cultural -back, ethno background, a sexual minority, or someone who just has an experience such as a death in the family, cancer, maybe a horrific accident, they have a minority experience that causes stress because it's different than the dominant population. And so those are all risk factors. We know from our trend analysis data that LGBTQ youth, Aboriginal youth, report higher levels of discrimination, feeling alienated. They don't feel like their teachers will know if they're in the classroom or not. And so those are all risk factors they're already facing and we haven't even touched on trauma. So then let's talk protective factors. We know that people matter. We know that a school connectedness scale, so whether or not that teacher will know that the, the, whether or not the student feels like their teacher will know if they are missing. It, that matters, that attitude matters. We know that if they feel like they belong in their school, that's a protective factor. We know if they feel like their family listens to them and cares what they had to, for dinner last night, that's a protective factor. And we know that if they feel like they have friends they can go to on a bad day, that's a protective factor. So part of trauma-informed care is thinking about how we build that connectedness within the school, within friends, and with family that we know are protective factors for kids who are facing adversity.